The following is a Stars and Strikes doubles rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. and strikes doubles. Stars and strikes double. This is sponsored in part by Summerville Lumber. Strikes Doubles is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Hamilton Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Hoodie. Hi again, everybody, and welcome now to the London Dairy Bowling Center. As we continue championship week here on the Winds, I'm Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. And now it's time to find out our fifth qualifying team for the Tri-State Megabucks Doubles Tournament of Champions here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Yeah, we're looking for two in a row, and we've got the young guns here in the red, and we've got the, uh, the veterans. And we were just talking before the match, we have a combined uh, age of 77 against 48 for the younger guys. So, um, come on, you senior citizens. I'm rooting for you. And I suppose uh, in in the uh, in the spirit of of truth in journalism, we should mention that the the oldest team here is the two of us. <laughs> but uh, in any event, we do have a matchup of uh, of the youngsters against the veterans. And uh, Steve Vadney won his 30th match here on the wins last week, and Brian Fuller has never been beaten. He's 4-0. Not quite, but it's almost like two generations here. These are the up-and-coming stars of this game. It uh, should be an interesting matchup. All right, let's meet both of these teams. First of all, our number two seeded group. This is the veteran team from East Kingston, New Hampshire, Brian Fuller, and his partner from Claremont, New Hampshire, Steve Vadney. Okay, Brian comes in averaging 120, his roll-off score at 689, Steve Vadney at 125 and 688. And, of course, last week they came up with a 362 to win their semifinal match over Larry Valcourt and Fred Ranella. So now, as so many other teams have done before them, they will try and make it two wins in a row. And they'll face our number one seeded team from Salem, New Hampshire, Pete Pereira, and his partner from Ware, New Hampshire, Kevin Davis. Okay, Peter comes in averaging... I haven't got his average down, but he's averaging a lot. <laughs> his roll-off score is quite impressive at 720, and Kevin, his roll-off score at 707, so that's a 1427 combined score. In Fantastic. fact, they were the only two guys that got over 700 in the roll-off. Yeah, absolutely right. So we'll take a break, come back with the first of three strings in this championship match here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Don't go away. Lots of prize money and a spot in the Tournament of Champions on the line. We'll be right back. All right, big crowd on hand, set to go for this championship match. Our top two seeded teams remain. And uh, how many times has this happened? Seems like every time this season. Brian Fuller and Steve Vadney with their win last week, throwing a 362, knocking off Larry Valcourt and Fred Ranella. And so it's number two against number one, Pete Pereira and Kevin Davis sitting with that 1427. As we mentioned a moment ago, they were the only two bowlers out of the 10 that qualified that were able to hit 700 for five games in the roll-off. So now, the winners of this match will join this group in the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Our number one seeded team as of the moment, Gary Carrington and Joe Ashline at 407. Jack Sanek and Brian McKinley, the only team so far this year to win two matches in a row, it has a 381. Chuck Godzik and Peter Flynn at 365. Paul St. Pierre and Steve Reno at 349. And we've got space for two more teams. One of those teams will be decided today. And Brian Fuller will get this match started. And we're going to have some noise for this match. <laughs> Brian Fuller, the lefty, and crosses over to that Brooklyn side, just missing the head pin, but he'll have a spare leave in any event. And he's got it. over to lane 29 here at the Londonderry Bowling Center. Brian on the head pin and 
Boy, it deserved a better leave than that. The four and the nine. He'd like the wood to stay right where it is because the ball could carry him off that piece of wood for the four pin and then go to the right side wall and then maybe back again for the nine. Let's see. Oh, yes. Nope. Came up real high on that piece of wood. And a ten. And for the team of Davis and Pereira, Kevin Davis will lead it off. Yes, and we were kidding everyone about their age and everything, and then <laughs> yours truly forgot to cop copy down their averages when I was at the opening of the show. So uh, Kevin averages 124, and his partner, Peter Pereira, at 128. Two uh, pretty impressive numbers there. In fact, uh, combined the highest averages of any team in this series. And Kevin takes a seven to start it. Kevin Davis from Ware, New Hampshire, works for Pepsi Cola, does a lot of his bowling at the Lakeside Lanes. Qualified with that 707, finishing second. Four horsemen left. One, two, four, and seven. The final roll-off was at the B&L Bowl in Hillsboro, New Hampshire. Ed Emerson and the gang handling things for us. Kevin Davis has had a certain amount of success here on Stars and Strikes. Five and two in his previous appearances. His partner, Peter Pereira, has had a little more frustration. Peter is one and five in his previous appearances here on the wins. Here's Steve Vadney now. Steve now with a record of 30 and 15 on Stars and Strikes. And with results like that, how could you be surprised? Right in the 1-3 pocket. 4, 5, 7, and 8. The last one's to go. I was kidding, Steve and, and Brian, but... In my generation, really. <laughs> Not even Brian. Steve is. <laughs> Seven pin drop with that first ball, looking for the spare on strike. And the triangle for the spare. <laughs> Steve just gave me a look. Like, yeah, we can do this. <laughs> I don't think uh, Steve and Brian were too thrilled about your idea of <laughs> kind of setting up the theme for this show. <laughs> Peter Pereira. <laughs> Shooting at the seven pin for the spare, and he's got it. But it is interesting because this is the next generation of bowlers. These two young guys are going to be around a long time. Looks like Peter's been here forever already. He's been made quite a few appearances. In the Peter and Kevin both have made a lot of appearances considering their age. They're both in their mid-20s and uh, early to mid-20s, actually. 3, 6, 10, and the 7 pin left. Peter, Peter. Peter is just 23 years old. Kevin is 25. Now everyone's going to want to know the breakdown of the other team. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Make it a nine. <laughs> 41 through four. I plan to have a nice long career. You know? <laughs> I don't want to make any enemies. You know? Not going to lead me down that path. All <laughs> <laughs> I know is when I started, Brian was bowling right-handed. <laughs> Two, four, five, and ten. Oh, what a Great shot. shot. Terrific shot. I mean, it's one thing to make enemies, but it's another thing to make enemies <laughs> among these this bowling uh, fraternity. They're tough. Some of them are tough. Right back in the pocket. Wants some help with a six pin. Doesn't get it. Six, seven, two pieces of wood next to the six. 
Trying to make it five marks out of six boxes. Have to fly it. Nope. Some of the uh, funnier things, I know a lot of people have commented on the fact that we have a lot of fun here on the show, but some of the funniest things uh, are things that you don't hear or can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> because the bowlers are, uh, some of them just, of course, most everybody with terrific sense of humor and uh, part of the... Uh, just part of the fraternity of bowling, I think, is... Uh, just joking around and getting on your opponent and so on. And uh, a lot of these guys, and the women too, are very, very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> Eight box for Kevin Davis. You can learn to bowl, but you gotta learn to talk that trash once That's in right. a while. That's in that, trash that comes with age. That's right, big part of the game. <laughs> the psychological aspect of the game. One, two, four, and nine left for Kevin. Nope. And we can get into hairstyles too, the young guys and <laughs> well, you okay. really are you really are asking for it, aren't you? <laughs> Fifty-eight through <laughs> six. <laughs> Never mind hairstyles, just hair. That's right. <laughs> Hello, Steve. <laughs> Championship week. One of these teams will make it to the Tournament of Champions. So as we get closer to that third game, we'll run down those scores again for you. It's very important the score is where you're seated in the Tournament of Champions, this final match. Steve looking at the two pin with a piece of wood behind it for the spare. No, oh, he's right there. Mark number five for the team. Steve with a high single of 197, a high triple of 488. Just catches the head pin, a little thin, and a six drop, and not a very pretty six drop either. Now the two, seven, eight, and ten. Just gonna go after the two pin and see what happens. Just missed. Nine box, 117 through eight for Fuller and Vadney. And a 34 pin advantage. Peter Pereira, that roll off score was tops among our group of 10 bowlers for this series. Oh, and there's an example of it. That's why he can get 720. <laughs> Seven twenty for five games is an average of one forty four, folks. Oh. About to say they really needed the mark too because Fuller and Vadney putting the heat on here early. Just a four fill on the strike. Talking to Peter before the match too, and he was sitting at about 540, I believe, with one game to go, and through a 184, I believe, the final game of that roll-off. Wow. Six box for Pete. On, a four and a strike and a six. Kind of, it's like two ten boxes. Didn't get it, any advantage at all having the mark posted up there. So the lead now is 39. Now oh, Brian coming from the back. And you don't see this very often, the one, two, three for a spare. And he converts it. One twenty-seven already through nine, plus this bonus ball. It'll be a great opening game. Just five. Brian Fuller's high single, a 190. It's high triple 464. 
Tried to make them dance, not quite. And a nine, six marks for the team of Fuller and Vadney and an opening 141. Tough crowd. Truly. <laughs> Hope that's not his chauffeur that was yelling at him. He might be walking. <laughs> Kevin Davis. Now, one, three, six, and the seven pin. Well, not an enviable position for Davis and Pereira coming to the final two boxes of this first game, even if Kevin had struck out, they still would have been trailing. And it was a terrific opening game for Fuller and Vadney. I'm sure if that was an option that we could give them, he'd take it though. <laughs> still needs a mark to break the 100 mark. Really forcing that ball out there right now. I've seen these guys bowl before though. Hang on, this is a long ways from over. Oh my. Well, they put themselves in a bit of a hole here to start the match, so. There are two games left, a six box, a 93, and a big 48 pin lead after one, but we've seen leads of this size uh, disappear before here on Stars of Strikes Doubles. We'll be back, game number two in a minute. Two games to go, Peter Pereira will try and begin the comeback for the team of Pereira and Davis. Boy. Whoa. <laughs> Scramble an eight, but he leaves himself the eight ten. Piece of wood to the right of the eight pin and one to the left. I probably want to take both of them. Let's see what he does. Oh. Ooh. Not far enough over. And the 10. Peter Pereira from Salem works as the manager of the Woburn Bolodrome. Has a lot of his bowling there as well as Park Place Lanes in Wyndham. Peter and his wife Diane are expecting their first child. And another big first ball, and look at this sleeve. <laughs> Eight, nine, plus the six pin. Piece of wood next to the nine. So I think if he's on the six pin, and preferably to the right, just may make this far enough over. Nine box, but boy, the first balls of those two boxes belie the score there. That must have show for a ball that was that well thrown. Now Steve Vadney trying to pad that 48 pin advantage. Four horsemen left, a little piece of wood on the six pin, on the four pin rather. That would maybe more trouble than, nope. Oh, backing up, not quite. Ten box for Steve. And now the four horsemen right with wood on the six pin. Actually, it's going to roll back to the ten pin now. Yeah, that should help. And it does. Yeah. 
You can see the replay, just splits the one and the three, everything domino effect all the way down to the six and the ten. And Kevin Davis. And a pretty good first ball for Kevin too, and he has a spare leave. On the six and the nine. You have to wait for that wood to calm down a little bit. Be careful, you don't want to cap that wood. You'll have to leave the nine pin. And that's what happened. Ten bucks. Let's take another look. You want to be a little farther to the right. Just capped it. Pin went one way, ball went the other. Oh, there oh, it is. I know what he's thinking now. Second strike for the team. They are in a hole. But that team can throw strikes, so anytime they got one posted, you got to watch out. Once that two pin to go down, it's going to be seven on the spare. Brian was working on it with the body English, but it wouldn't go. Uh, he'll play the two pin, trying to move it to the right for the 6-10. Let's wait and see if that wood came up and froze behind the two, but it doesn't. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yes! What a shot! Snaps it up and over there. Thought he might have been a little full on the two pin. Went right straight up, came down on the six, and then finally the ten. Great shot by Brian Fuller. Makes it two spares in a row for the team. Oh, oh again, one. almost. Oh, he scared it. it. Actually touched the ten pin. You can see it rocking a little bit. Good bid to make it three in a row. It's a nine box and we will take a break right here. Fuller and Vadney putting the heat on almost at the halfway point. Championship week continues on Stars and Strikes doubles right after these messages. We have to know what Peter's thinking right now. Being down 61, boy, if I could throw a double. Instead, right through full. the middle. Pete Pereira's high single at 211. High triple, 498. So a disappointing four on the strike, a five on the strike, I'm sorry. Let me correct that. See, I made all the scoring mistakes last week. Yeah. I thought I had made another one. It still is disappointing, though. <laughs> oh, look oh, at this. No. Look at this. Oh, one no. ball too late. <laughs> another strike, but the eight box in the middle. Actually, he's on the head pin the box before, too, but went through the middle. As I said, that team can throw strikes. Well, they each have high singles over 200, so you know that they can add them up quickly. Steve Vadney faced with the 6-7-10 with Wood. Want to be inside the left of the six pin, have it come off the wall. Ooh, that was played it right split. on the six pin and almost jumped it over there. For the 10, no. It'll be a nine box. Actually took the right edge of the six pin, if anything. Now they're opposite the strike. Ooh, and another ugly split. But you gotta be thinking that Pereira and Davis were looking at hopefully cutting that 48 pin lead in half, maybe, in this middle game if they could. They still have an opportunity to do that, but. Oh, that close. Wow. Boy, that was a heck of a shot. Just barely kept the ball in the lane. <laughs> and it's a nine. So two nine boxes for Steve Vadney, and let's take another look at that. He pinches it right in the corner. 
right where the two pieces of wood meet. And very nearly threw it all the way across for the spare. And another big ball for Kevin Davis on the strike. And if it comes this way, if it comes this way. <laughs> well, he's got the one and the two standing and looks like may have some more wood coming up. We see what Kevin faces. For the spare. No, too full. Team struggling to get two marks in a row here and not because they're bowling that badly. Just a little full on the object pin, the head pin that time, and drove it straight back. I think also you can tell now that they may be pressing just a little bit because they know that each box that goes by makes things a little tougher. Almost another strike. That would have been their third strike in a row on lane 29. Instead, it's a solid 10 pin with no wood. Kevin moves to the left of the approach, give himself a little more room. Gets it. Marking every other box right now. Brian Fuller steps up, the left-hander. And it's the one, two, and 10. No. And he'll take an eight box. Oh, a little dry spell for the team of Fuller and Vadney here. Lead down to 45. Spear already posted for Herrera and Davis. On the head pin, but wow. Five, seven, and eight wood to the left. Try the wood here. I don't I don't I think it's too deep. I think you're gonna go after the five pin on the right hand side. Let's see. Oh! oh. Wow. But I failed to take into consideration that he's a left-hander. <laughs> <laughs> Just caught the tail end of that wood, and the ball's going from left to right anyways, and was able to cover the five. Big spare. Thanks, Brian. Make me look bad. <laughs> <laughs> right in the pocket again, and oh. <laughs> unbelievable. He just threw his hands up in the air to say, what do I have to do? Mount the four, five, and seven. There is a piece of wood. There it is. You know, almost like it behind the five pin. He's going to have to play the five. Ooh. That's why I want, like to have it behind the five, because you would have got the ball and the five pin moving to the left. The ball did come back, but not enough to take the four pin. So it's a ten box. And Pete will move over to lane 29, where they've marked the last three times. They didn't mark at all on this lane in the first game, Herrera and Davis, and they got another shot here. The two and the four. Let's try to avoid the piece of wood out in front and take the two four by themselves. Can you believe that? How wow. many times is that? They Hit the object pin of the two pins together and just drove it straight back. And a 10, a 118, two game total, 211. Well, Fuller and Vadney are going to have just about all of their 48 pin lead, if not more, when this game is over. Vadney on the spare, just two. <laughs> Leaving the five and the six. Remember they opened with the 141 game. They're at 100 now. So now without a mark here in the 10th uh, because of that two fill, they'll lose some of their lead. But there's the mark. 
Well, that's mark number 10 in 20 boxes for Fuller and Vadney. And that close to the spare, but it's enough to win the second game and add one more pin onto the lead. A two game total, 260 for Fuller and Vadney. A 49 pin lead over Pereira and Davis with 211. One game to decide the championship and we'll have it when we come back. Steve Vadney will lead it off for the team as uh, both teams have elected to uh, change the order here for the third game. Steve Vadney, who led off the second, will do so again here in the third, and Pete Pereira will do the same for the team of Pereira and Davis. Well, you got to figure at this point, Dan, that whichever team wins this match is going to have a pretty good score because should Vadney right and Fuller win it, they're already at 260. If Pereira and Davis are able to come back and win it, uh, they will have to obviously overcome a large lead. Of course, the one that's on the bubble, so to speak, is 349. It definitely is in jeopardy. 365, 381, 407. Those are the top scores. A pair of nines for Steve Adney. So an opening right away for Pete Pereira. And it's a half Worcester. <laughs> Winning team from today's match becomes our fifth qualifying. Oh, how about that for a cut shot for a 10? Un unfortunately for a 10, but what a great shot. Cutting the six into the five. Recovered nicely from the half Worcester though. And there's a big strike on top of it. Uh, it's just been a question of one ball too late or one ball too early uh, all day long for Pete Pereira and Kevin Davis. They got spurts, but the spurts haven't been long enough, haven't been consecutive boxes, and that's the difference. That's four strikes they have now in the match. But they haven't got any of them together. In fact, they haven't put two marks together yet. <laughs> well, I'm sure when Kevin Davis gets up there, he'd like to have the next mark right now, and it'd be a strike. Three nines, 27, three open frames to start off for Steve Adney and Brian Fuller, leading by 47. The Tournament of Champions, of course, for both singles and doubles, as well as our weekly presentation here on the wins. All brought to you by Tri-State Megabucks. The folks who asked you to just imagine being rich. Oh, yeah. Nice spare. Spare in the fourth by Brian Fuller. It may only take two or three marks for Fuller and Vadney to put this away, so every mark critical because of that. on the strike now. Two, four, and seven for the spare. No. 
That's the story of this match for them. Leaving one pin standing after the second ball a number of times. Ten bucks. They have taken 12 off the lead. If uh, Kevin can put a mark up here, they at least won't lose any ground for the moment. Boy. They are explosive. Six pin for a spare. Nope. Now Kevin had the 10 pin up earlier. He moved to the left on the approach. Now that time he stayed with a 6 pin. He stayed straight in the same spot and moved ball, pulled the ball to the left. Fuller and Vadney with the lead, gunning for the championship. A spare up. And Steve Vadney will fill that spare when we come back. All right, Steve Vadney. Spare leave, 3-6. May not want to try to split him, though. He doesn't. Heavy on the three pin, drove it straight back, two marks in a row. Ooh, get away with that one. That looked like destined for a half whister left, and instead he's just got two pins standing. The one and the three. No, Steve knew he missed it. Looked down right after he let it go. We'll take it for the 10 bucks. 73 through six. Could Fuller and Vadney break the back-to-back -back curse? <laughs> they have the big lead here, coming down the stretch. Two and five left for Peter Pereira. Just about have to mark out, or pretty close to it. Unless they manage to put some strikes together. Right, which they can. Just, they've had some strikes. Four of them, more strikes than Spears. Yep, and no two marks together yet. No, that was a strike ball. And that pin's had enough. He's coming back to say something, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> he hit that one so hard. <laughs> oh, after the wait, Pete will have the four pin. For the spare in the sixth. He's still alive. Come on, Brian, a lot of you are going to start scoreboard watching now. And Steve Adney, Brian Fuller, 260. They're at 113 clip right now. So that would definitely put them in the 380 bracket. We're pretty close. With another mark. Yeah, I would say uh, if Fuller and Vadney go on to win, which it appears that they might barring a miracle comeback, or regardless, either team. The winning team here is going to be well over 370, it would appear. And uh, then that would make the next checkpoint 381, which is the number two spot right now held by Jack Sanek and Brian McKinley. Be a long tough climb here to get up to that 407. Yeah, they need strikes to do that. And we wondered uh, back when that was thrown, I think they were the first qualifying team of the year, and we wondered if anybody would touch that <laughs> score. That's a tough score to beat in doubles, 407. 4789, no wood. Just oh, like that! Yes. 
Wow. Did, did you kind of get the feeling yeah. that he knew he was going to make that? <laughs> Even before he let it go, just kind of the way he approached it. Just played the triangle on the left, slid everything to the right. Big, Great shot. Big double high five from his partner. It just hasn't been Kevin and Peter's day. Fair to say that uh, youth has not been served today. <laughs> but they will be back. All even in this game, but a 49 pin lead carrying over. As it turned out, uh, Steve Vadney and Brian Fuller probably won this match in the first five boxes. They had four marks in the first five and a 33-pin lead almost before the thing started. Great effort by Kevin on the spread eagle. Left just the two-pin. And a nine. So, final two now for Steve Vadney, and we'll keep an eye on this final score as it rolls up here. Looks like 407 might be safe. 381. I need another mark. Good fill in another mark. That's a pretty good fill. That's and a real another, good fill. And another mark. <laughs> <laughs> Accomplished both. Well, that should take care of the 381. Well, if you were to throw the triple here, here's the replay of that. Comes sliding over for the 8 pin. They needed only 121 to get the uh, 381. He's at 111 plus two balls in the ninth. No double, but. It is enough to climb into second place, though. Yep. And it's going to be in the high 380 range. Maybe even 390. 390 it is. 130 and a 390. 130 was the average for the three games. 141, 119, 130. 390 for Fuller and Vadney. Pete Pereira will finish it off now for the team of Pereira and Davis. That's the kind of a day it's been. Mm -hmm. Not my day today. <laughs> Peter just got through saying, well. Right to the bitter end. Now, Steve Vadney has had his own personal struggle over the years here on Stars and Strikes, uh, getting to Tournaments of Champions, so he has finally broken through. I believe this might be his first one. He breaks through in doubles with his partner Brian Fuller at a 390 and a big win over Pete Pereira and Kevin Davis. We'll be back to award the prize money and talk to the bowlers in a minute. All right, championship week completed now here at the Londonderry Bowling Center. A win for Brian Fuller and Steve Vadney as they come up with a 390. And right now they sit in second spot for qualifying in the Tri-State Megabucks Doubles Tournament of Champions. We'll have more on that in a minute. But first off, let's meet our uh, runners-up, Pete Pereira and Kevin Davis. Come on up. Got uh, second, pra uh, second place prize money for you here, splitting $400. And uh, I, th I think maybe uh, every I think maybe we got the, the old guys mad talking about this old and young thing. <laughs> oh, they were pretty upset, yeah. <laughs> they come out flying the first string, and that's all it takes sometimes. Right? Yeah, they, they really did come out. Uh, really, we were talking about it just a minute ago. They, they almost won the match in the first five boxes, as it turned out. They got a, a couple of big marks early and, and piled up the lead. It's like I told him, we took up some warm-up box. I threw three strikes in a row to begin, and I knew it was a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> well, and still, though, you had the strikes uh, in the match itself. You just couldn't put anything together. If you, if you throw any of those two strikes together, maybe, maybe it's different. Oh, you hit the head pin, you only get three or four. It's tough to throw a double that <laughs> yeah, way. <so>. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, again, uh, four hundred dollars second place money, and uh, there is there are still a couple more chances, uh, both on this show and also on the uh, single show to qualify for the tournament of champions. So, hope we'll see you again real soon. We'll, we'll try thanks. to be back. All right, thanks very Thank much, you. guys. Appreciate it. And now let's call up our champions, Brian Fuller and Steve Vadney. If they're if they're physically able to walk up here and accept their checks, I guess they are. Steve and uh, Brian, congratulations. Uh, you really did uh, kind of put the hammer down. You, you're upset about this age thing, weren't you? You just yeah. put the hammer down early. Yeah, they they, they, they started getting on us back there a little bit, and uh, so I guess I guess they get it. We got to show them we still got a little bit left in there. <laughs> well, not only that, but uh, you win two weeks in a row. We talked about this uh, last week. This is only the second time all year that uh, that a team has won two weeks in a row. Well, I hope we can do it again the next time. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, good point, because right now you know that uh, you're in that second spot uh, for the Tournament of Champions. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, is this going to be your first Tournament of Champions? I know you've been... Uh, it'll be the second, okay, because I know you'd, you'd well, we missed... We won last year with Joe. Joe uh, that, that's right, that's right. So this is uh, be the second year in a row for you in doubles, mm -hmm. and I know you've had some opportunities in singles that haven't uh, worked out right for you, so this ma this has to make you feel a little better. Yeah, yeah I got a little help to get me in with, with, with this <laughs> one. And, uh, well, see, that's what you need is a partner to bring you in. It took, <laughs> took three tries this year to get here, though. <laughs> <laughs> now, also, uh, Brian, we mentioned this last week, but uh, you have yet to lose, so now you can kind of uh, sit on that five-match winning streak and uh, come back in the spring. Yeah, I hope so, and just keep it going. <laughs> and, and the thing is, uh, spring is not that far away. We're only uh, five weeks away now from the beginning of the start of the Tournament of Champions. We have just one more series to go, and then we'll see you guys back. Uh, of course, right now you're sitting in the number two spot, so you know you'll be no worse than third. Yeah. So congratulations, and, uh, of course, the $800 in prize money now to tide you over, and uh, we'll see you in a few weeks. Okay. All right. Steve Vadney and Brian Fuller, congratulations. And uh, we'll bring Dan Murphy back in here. Uh, it's uh, victory for the old guys, so a good day for you. <laughs> yes, yeah. We're proud of that generation. Uh, guys that bowl real well today. Uh, they broke the streak of winning two in a row, and uh, uh, another good addition to the Tournament of Champions in the doubles format. Yeah, it, it really is going to be an incredible field uh, that we're putting together uh, for both events, really. But uh, this doubles event uh, right now looks to be a, a real war, and you've got uh, some guys that have been here an awful lot uh, coming in for the Tournament of Champions. Yeah, all of them are going to be seasoned by that time, and uh, it should be an interesting matchup. All right, remember that uh, next Sunday here on Stars and Strikes, we will begin our final regular series of the season, both uh, on the singles show at noon and here on Stars and Strikes doubles at one. So we invite you to join join us for that so we need uh, one more singles qualifier and one more doubles team to get into the tournament of champions before we get it started by the way if you'd like to make uh, arrangements for that or make plans for that the tournament of champions will begin on both shows on sunday april the 25th so that's the date you want to keep in mind to uh, start watching for the tournament of champions and of course uh, that will run for five weeks in both hours so until next sunday at 12 noon here on the winds for dan murphy and the whole crew doug brown have a good week everybody